What's going on everyone? Matesh here with Amtech and today we are talking about the cameras on the Nokia 6.1. Now, historically, budget phones tend to have terrible cameras, but it's 2018 and if you guys watched my last video, you know that the processors have at least caught up to flagship level processors. So, have the cameras? Let's find out. Get weekly tech news, product reviews, and how-to videos. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next upload. Okay, so this is footage from the rear camera, recorded at 4K. Uh, it's got OZO sound inside, which is like a surround sound. So this definitely sounds better than my Pixel 2 does, but yeah, so I'm just walking right now and you can see that, so this camera has no optical limit stabilization, so the footage will probably be a little shaky. And yeah. And this is footage from the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera can do 1080p at 30 frames per second and once again, of course, no optical limit stabilization, so maybe a little bit of shaky footage, but it does a pretty good job. I think the video is pretty good and the sound quality, once again, is top-notch, so yeah. All right, so one of the more interesting features that the Nokia camera has is dual video and photo. So you can see, you can use both the cameras together to take video or photos. And yeah, it's an interesting little feature. I'm not sure when I would use this that much. Um, maybe if I'm in a scenic spot somewhere and I wanted to get video of both the scenic thing and myself, maybe then. Um, probably I'd use more photos than the actual video things itself. It also has another mode called picture in picture, which I will show you right now. Right, so as you can see, picture in picture is very similar to the dual video. Once again, you're using both the cameras. So I've got the back camera going and the front camera on me. And yeah, you can see me and what I'm seeing. So it's pretty cool. Um, I can definitely see myself using this one more than the other one. But even then, I still find this to be a feature that I'd rarely use. But yeah, it's cool that it's there. All right, so let's move on from talking about videos to talking about still images because let's face it, most people take more photos than they do videos. So let me just start off by saying that the camera can do a really good job when HDR is turned on and there's good light. So this is an example of an image where I think the HDR did a pretty good job. You can see the sky is still in there even though it was like a very bright day. Plus you also get some details in the shaded area. So. Overall, I think when the HDR is on, it does a good job, but I had HDR set to auto mode, so it was supposed to detect when it would be a good time to turn on, and this is a picture where it didn't turn on and it really should have. So you can see right here, the sky is just completely blown out. In fact, even the ground is completely blown out, so I have no idea why it didn't trigger HDR. I probably should have turned it on manual, but that would have taken a little bit of a second, but yeah, so when the HDR turns on, you can get a good picture, but sometimes it really does fail. Now, next up, we have an example, once again, of when HDR does a good job, but I feel like it could have done a better job. The dynamic range is good here, but it could have been better. If you look at these trees down here, you can see that there is not much structure at all. There's no detail. You can hardly make out what is down here. The sky looks great, and the building has a lot of detail on it, too, but... Just the trees down here and the darkness, it's just kind of gone. You can't really see what's there at all. So HDR can do a good job, but it doesn't quite compete with what you can get out of the Pixel 2. And the next up, we have a macro shot, and this is a shot I was really happy with. You can see that this thing got a ton of detail on the flower itself. But if you look at the background, you can see it's nicely blurred out thanks to that f2.0 aperture. And yeah, overall, I would just open up my camera, took the shot, and I was very happy with what I got. So as I said, you can get some really good shots out of this. This is another example of a macro shot. You can see it's got this nice bokeh effect in the background, a lot of blurred out, a lot of stuff in focus. The HDR, once again, not the best. You can see here the sky is a little bit blown out, but overall, I still like how this image looks. For a $300 smartphone, I think this did a great job. And next up we have this image. So this was taken right at sunset. This was taken at, let me go ahead and pull up the time because it's actually important to the point I'm trying to make here for this one. If you guys can see, this was taken at 8.02 p.m. And let me just go ahead and zoom in so you guys can see the detail in here. So you know what? There's a decent amount of detail. It's not as sharp as I would like it to be, but it looks like a pretty good picture. Now, 
Let's see the next one. This was taken if you look at 8.03 p.m. So just one minute later after the sun set and when I zoom in on this one you can see that there is basically no detail in this picture whatsoever. There's some but a lot of this email a lot of this image is just grainy, it's splotchy, and it just doesn't look good. So, I don't know if you guys heard me say at the beginning, but you really do need good light to get good pictures out of this camera. It does not do well in poor lighting. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys with the next couple. So this is another one that I took, just quickly opened up my camera, took this picture, and you know what, I'm just extremely disappointed by this. Just blurry, and you can't make out any of this. Like, I, don't, I just, I guess the focus just didn't work in this photo so yeah a lot of times in low light just I just can't trust this camera at all uh, there's another example where you know from a distance this one doesn't look that bad but if you zoom in just a little bit like if you were to post this anywhere you can see that it is just it's just a mess there's just way too much noise way it's just not detailed at all and yeah in low light you are left with the same stuff you get before uh, there's another image in relatively low light and you can see once again it's fine from far away maybe but if you zoom in just a little bit you can see like a lot of the stuff is just blurry it's out of focus there's a ton of noise in this image and yeah it's not one that i would be very happy with um from a distance maybe you could put this on instagram and it'd be okay but seeing it up close you're never going to be happy with a picture like this and then we have the front facing camera. The front facing camera is very similar to the rear facing camera in that it's good in good light, not so good in low light. The HDR is not so good in the front facing camera. You can see here like some of the sky is blown out in this, uh, the Chicago Bee and the Cloud Gate if you guys aren't familiar with this. But you can see that the sky is pretty blown out. Even up here it's like way too light in the color. Next up, and then, but this is a good example of when it gets it right, it can do a pretty good job. So I love the amount of contrast in here. The sky is good. This is just, it's just a good image overall. So you can get some decent looking pictures from the face facing cameras if you have the conditions right. This is an example of when low light, in low light, this camera just does not take very good pictures. So if you look up here at the sky, it's just completely blown out. This was the sunset was in the background and it's just completely gone. I was hoping you could pull some of those colors in and you can see a little bit of that sunset down here, but otherwise this thing is just completely gone. And if you look at my face, uh, hopefully don't zoom in this far, you can see there's just a ton of noise. Nothing is, nothing is clear. Everything is just a little bit blurry. Like they've tried to do noise reduction and it just does not work well. So yeah, overall I would say that this camera it does a good job in good light, and if, especially if HDR cooks in, like it, you can get some decent pictures out of this, but in low light, this thing does not take good pictures. There you guys go, that is a quick look at the photos and videos you can expect out of the Nokia 6.1, and I think it's safe to say that budget phones just haven't caught up to flagship phones when it comes to image quality. So yeah, in good lighting, they can take some pretty good pictures, but when it comes to bad lighting, they just don't take anything that's worth using. So there you guys have it. And when it comes to camera quality, you're getting what you pay for. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys in this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked it, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.